Hello students. Welcome to today's biology class. Today, let's discuss a new topic that is human reproduction. It is chapter number 3 of your textbook. You have already discussed, studied about the reproduction in organisms as well as sexual reproduction in flowering plants. Today, let's discuss about the reproduction in human beings. As you all know, human beings are unisexual. That means human males and females are separate. And human females, human beings are viviparous. Viviparous means they give birth to young ones. Now, let us discuss about the major events which takes place during human reproduction or what are the major events in human reproduction. So the first major event in reproduction is the gametogenesis. Second, insemination. Third one, fertilization. Fourth one, implantation. Fifth one, gestation. And the last one, parturition. So, hope you got the major events. There are five, six major events in human reproduction. The first one, gametogenesis. Second one, insemination. Third one, fertilization. Fourth one, implantation. Fifth one, gestation. And the last one, parturition. Now, let's see each of these. The first one, gametogenesis. From the term itself, it's very clear. Genesis means synthesis. Gametogenesis means synthesis of gametes. So, uh, which are the gametes uh, in human beings? The male gametes, they are the sperms and the female gametes, that is the ovum or the egg. Now, where does this synthesis of these gametes take place? The formation of gametes, that is the sperms, take place in the male reproductive organ, that is the testis, and the female. Uh, gamete that is the ovum will be produced within the ovary. So the formation of gametes within the gonads, gonads means the ovaries and the testis is called as gametogenesis. Hope you got it. So what is gametogenesis? The formation of the male and female gametes within the gonads or sex organs. Hope it's clear. The second one, after the formation of gametes, now, the next step is what? Fusion of gametes. Now, before fusion, uh, uh, what, what should happen? The male gametes has to be transferred into the female genital tract. Why? Because in human beings, the reproduction, uh, fertilization is internal. Human beings, fertilization is internal. That means the male gametes has to. Uh, will have to be transferred into the female gamete. So, this transfer of the sperms into the female genital uh, tract is called as insemination. So, that is the second uh, major event. After that, the next event is, so now the sperms will be inside the female genital tract. Now, the fusion has to take place. That is called as fertilization. So, what is fertilization? Fusion of the male and the female gamete which leads to the formation of zygote. Fusion of male and female gamete leads to the formation of zygote. That is called as fertilization. The fourth major event is implantation. Now, what is the meaning of implantation? After the formation of zygote, the zygote starts dividing, resulting in the formation of an embryo. And the embryo again goes on dividing, uh, undergo uh, uh, division and differentiation, resulting in the formation of different structures. The first being, the first embryonic stage being the blastocyst. The attachment of this blastocyst to the uterine wall of the uh, female is called as implantation. We will be studying this in detail in the later part of this chapter. So, for the time being, you should know implantation means it is an attachment of blastocyst to the uterine wall. Then, the next one is gestation. Now, what is gestation? It is the period between conception and birth. Conception means what? The time 
uh, when the fusion takes place, fusion of the male and the female gamete takes place. It takes place within the female reproductive system. So, the from the time of the fusion till the baby uh, is delivered, till that time, that, uh, that period is called as gestation. So, we can uh, define gestation as the period of development of the embryo into the baby inside the womb. Womb means the uterus of the mother. Then, Parturition means the de process of delivery of the baby. So, these are the different uh, events in the process of reproduction, which are the gametogenesis, insemination, fertilization, implantation and finally parturition. Hope you got it. So, once again, the process major events in reproduction. First one, gametogenesis. Second one, insemination. Third one, fertilization. Fourth one, implantation. Fifth one, gestation. And the last one, parturition. Now, in today's class, let's discuss about the male reproductive system. Now, the male reproductive system, it is located in the pelvic region. The male reproductive system consists of a pair of testes, a pair of, a pair of testes, accessory ducts, accessory glands, external genitalia. So these are the four major parts of the male reproductive system, which are the a pair of testes, accessory ducts, accessory glands and external genitalia. Hope you got it right. Now let's uh, study about each of these. The first one, a pair of testes. Now, as you, uh, as we have seen, or as you, we have uh, discussed, the testis or the male reproductive system, it is located in the pelvic region. And the testis is found outside the abdominal cavity. It is not found inside the abdominal cavity. The testis is found outside the abdominal cavity within a pouch-like structure. Pouch means a bag-like structure. And this bag-like structure is called as the scrotum. Right now, what is the function of scrotum? So here in this picture, you can see this is a scrotum. This is the testis which is found inside a sac-like structure. This is the sac-like structure which is called as a scrotum. Now, what is the function of scrotum? Uh, as you know, testis. It is inside the testis that the formation of sperms takes place, or the production of sperms takes place within the testis. Now. For the process of the production of sperms, which we call as spermatogenesis. So, what is spermatogenesis? Synthesis of sperms within the testis. So, for the process of spermatogenesis, an optimum temperature is required. And this temperature should be 2 to 2.5 degrees Celsius less than our body's normal temperature. Hope you understood what I said. What is that? For the process of spermatogenesis, the body's temperature has to be 2 to 2.5 degree less than the normal body temperature. So, in order to maintain this low temperature, the testis is found outside the abdominal cavity in a pouch called as the scrotum. So, what is the function of scrotum? It helps in maintaining low temperature of testis which is necessary for spermatogenesis. Hope it's clear? Right. Now, what is the shape of the testis? As you can see here, the shape is, it is oval in shape and it has a length of about 4 to 5 centimeter and a width of about 2 to 3 centimeter. Then, it is covered, this testis is covered by a tough connective tissue capsule. It has a connective tissue capsule and this connective tissue capsule is called as the tunica albuginea. So, what is tunica albuginea? It is a covering of the testis or the outer lining of the testis. Testis is enclosed. It is covered by a tough connective tissue capsule called as the tunica albuginea. Hope it's clear. Yes or no? Right. Now, let's study about the structure of testis. So, here you can see this is a picture of a, a section of testis. Each testis, so this is one testis, each testis has about 250 compartments here. You can see each one is a compartment. So it has about 250 compartments and each of this is called as a testicular lobule. So each testis has about 250 compartments called as testicular lobules. Right? Now, 
each lobule, inside each lobule, you find one to three highly coiled seminiferous tubules. So what you see uh, here in this picture, this yellow colored coiled structures are nothing but the seminiferous tubules. And it is inside these seminiferous tubules that the sperms are produced. Hope it's clear. So now uh, you must have understood now what is spermatogenesis? What is spermatogenesis? Production of sperms within the seminiferous tubules of the testis. Synthesis of sperms within the seminiferous tubules of the testis. So where are the sperms formed? Sperms are formed inside the seminiferous tubules. And where are the seminiferous tubules found? It is found inside the testicular lobules of the testis. Hope it's clear? Right. Now, now let's study about the structure of a seminiferous tubule. So here you can see this is the uh, diagram of a seminiferous tubule. This is one complete seminiferous tubule. This is half. Okay. Now, each seminiferous tubule. So this is how you find inside a microscope. Under a microscope, you find the TS of mammalian testis like this. Here you can see number of each one is a seminiferous tubule. And in between that seminiferous tubule, you find certain gaps. Okay. Right. Now, each seminiferous tubule, if you take one seminiferous tubule, it is lined by an epithelium. And this epithelium is called as the germinal epithelium. And this germinal epithelium is made up of two types of cells. The one called as the male germ cells and the other one called as the sertoli cells. The male germ cells are also called as the spermatogonia. What is it called as? Spermatogonia. So where do you find this? Each seminiferous tubule is lined by a germinal epithelium, which in turn is made up of two types of cells, which are the male germ cells, also called as spermatogonia, and the second type of cells called as sertoli cells. Hope it's clear. So the structure of seminiferous tubule lined by germinal epithelium, made up of two types of cells, male germ cells and sertoli cells. Now. What is the function of male germ cells? As I have told you, male germ cells are also called as spermatogonia. These cells undergo meiotic division leading to the formation of sperms. Now, what is meiotic division? You have already studied about meiotic division. Meiotic division is also called as reductionary division. And as a result of meiotic division, what happens? One cell divides and forms four daughter cells. But each of these daughter cells will be having half the number of chromosomes as that of the parent cell. So, the male germ cells will be deployed in number. They will be having 46 chromosomes. And these male germ cells undergo meiotic division, resulting in the formation of sperms. Now, what, is a, uh, what will be the chromosome number of sperms? Sperms will be having only 23 chromosomes. Hope it's clear? Yes or no? Right. Now, the Sertoli cells. So, what's the function of Sertoli cells now? Sertoli cells provide nutrition to the germ cells. So, here in this picture, you can see these uh, cells, these big uh, cells are called as the uh, spermatogonia. In between that, you will find long elongated cells. Right? These long elongated cells are the Sertoli cells. So these are the male germ cells or the spermatogonia and these are the Sertoli cells. Function of male germ cell is to undergo meiosis leading to the formation of sperms and the function of Sertoli cell is to provide nutrition to male germ cells. But it's clear. Right. Now. The regions outside the seminiferous tubules, as I've told you, these regions between the seminiferous tubules, they are called as the interstitial spaces. And in these spaces, we find certain cells called as the Leydig cells or interstitial cells. Okay, So here you can see. These are called as the Leydig cells or the interstitial cells. So in the picture, you can see these are the Leydig cells, okay, which are found between, between seminiferous tubules. The space between the seminiferous tubules is called as an interstitial space, which where we find the Leydig cells. Now, what is the function of Leydig cells? It has an important role to play. Now, what is the function? Its function is to synthesize and secrete testicular hormones called as the androgens. Okay, so androgens are the testicular hormones which are secreted by specialized cells called as Leydig cells. And where do you find these Leydig cells? Leydig cells are found in the interstitial spaces between the seminiferous tubules. Hope 
the structure of seminiferous tubule is clear to you all. Right? So once again, each seminiferous tubule is lined by a germinal epithelium which is made up of two types of cells. Male germ cells also called as spermatogonia and Sertoli cells. Function of uh, male germ cells is to, is to undergo meiosis and form sperms. And the function of Sertoli cells is to provide nutrition to the male germ cells. Now in between the seminiferous tubules, we find certain cells called as the Leydig cells and their function is to synthesize and secrete testicular hormones called as androgens. Hope it's clear? Right. Now, so we have discussed about the pair of testes. Now, the second part of the male reproductive system is the accessory ducts. Now, which are the accessory ducts? The accessory ducts include the reti testis, vasa efferentia, epididymis and vas deferens. Once again, reti testis, vasa efferentia, epididymis and vas deferens. So these are the accessory ducts. Now let's see. The seminiferous tubules here in this picture you can see. So these yellow coiled structures are the seminiferous tubules. These seminiferous tubules opens into the reti testis. So what you find here is a reti testis. Now this reti testis leads into again, again another set of tubules which are called as the vasa efferentia. These are the vasa efferentia. Vasa efferentia leaves the testis and opens into the next structure called as the epididymis. Epididymis is a long narrow tubule, right? Long narrow tubule. So this epididymis, uh, the function, the vasa efferentia leaves the testis and opens into epididymis. This epididymis finally leads into the vas deferens. So, hope you got the uh, root. Okay. So, accessory ducts, it begins from the sem uh, reti testis. Seminiferous tubules opens into reti testis, which later opens into the vasa efferentia. Vasa efferentia leaves the uh, testis and then opens into the long tube called as epididymis. Epididymis leads into the vas deferens. Now let's see what's the function of epididymis. The function of epididymis is to store uh, the sperms temporarily and then transport the sperm from the testis to the outside through the urethra. Okay, so the function of epididymis is to temporarily store the sperms and later transport it to the uh, outside through the uh, urethra. Hope it's clear. So, these are the uh, four uh, different accessory ducts, which are the reti testis, vasa efferentia, epididymis and vas deferens. Try to remember that in order so that you will not have any confusion. So, the first is seminiferous tubule, then opens into reti testis, then into vas efferentia, then into epididymis and then finally vas deferens. So, these are the accessory ducts. Hope it's clear. Right. Now, let's discuss about uh, the, see, here you have a picture of this uh, male reproductive system. This picture helps you to draw uh, this uh, question you can expect as a five mark question. Every year, either male reproductive system or female reproductive system will be asked to, for you all to draw. Okay, so it will be asked as a final question. So here I have uh, inserted a picture which is a drawn picture. Okay, uh, just hand drawn by hand. So you can easily uh, draw looking at this picture. Okay, now, now what happens? So here you can see clearly this is a testis. Then here you can see this is the epididymis and this is a vast difference. Now the vast difference, it ascends upwards towards the abdomen. And it loops over the ureter. So urinary bladder consists, uh, sorry, uh, the excretory system consists of the urinary bladder, the ureters and uh, the urethra. So the urinary bladder comes out as the ureters. So the vast difference, it ascends uh, towards the abdomen, to the abdomen. It loops over the urinary bladder and then it extends backwards. So this is the vast difference. It extends backwards and it receives a duct from the seminal vesicle. So, associated with the male reproductive system are found accessory glands, right? So, the uh, uh, three accessory glands are a pair of seminal vesicle, 
a prostate gland and a pair of bulbo urethral glands okay now the seminal vesicle is a pair of accessory glands which are found associated with the male reproductive system so here you can see a pair of seminal vesicle now the vas deferens receive the opening or the duct the tube which comes from the seminal vesicle so this vas deferens and the duct of the seminal vesicle join and form a ejaculatory duct which finally opens into the urethra and opening of that urethra is called as the urethral uh, meatus okay so the neck of the urinary bladder the ejaculatory duct which is formed by vas deferens and the duct of the seminal vesicle uh, and the prostate gland open into the urethra which opens to the outside through the penis that is uh, the urethra extends through the penis and it uh, comes it goes out it opens out through an opening called as called as the urethral meatus okay hope it's clear so once again testis then inside the testis we find the seminiferous tubules seminiferous tubules opens into reti testis which opens into vasi frangia which later opens into the epididymis right so you here you can see this is epididymis then it moves upwards as a vas deferens vas deferens ascend to the abdomen then it loops around the urinary bladder it take a curve Uh, 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 around the ureter and then it loops around the urinary bladder and then it receives a duct from the seminal vesicle and opens as the ejaculatory duct right and then this uh, ejaculatory duct the neck of the urinary bladder this is the neck of the urinary bladder the ejaculatory duct and the prostate gland open into the urethra this is the urethra which extends through the penis and it Uh, opens uh, through an external opening called as the urethral meatus hope it's clear right now so here it is a little more clear uh, the same thing so let us fast uh, uh, discuss all the points of this uh, male product parts of the male reproductive system it consists of a pair of testis right uh, then the accessory ducts the accessory ducts involves the uh, reti testis vasa efferentia epididymis vas deferens the vas deferens ascends upwards towards the abdomen then it uh, loops around the urinary bladder receives the duct from the seminal vesicle opens as the ejaculatory duct into the urethra the urethra extends through the penis and it opens outside through the uh, opening which is called as the urethral meatus hope it's clear right now let's uh, discuss about the accessory glands as i've already told you the accessory glands include a pair of seminal vesicle one single prostate gland this is one single prostate gland and this is the a pair of bulbo urethral glands so these are the three different accessory glands associated with the male reproductive system which are they the paired seminal vesicle prostate gland and a paired bulbo urethral gland now the secretion of these glands what's the function of the glands gland secretes certain uh, uh, liquid and the secretions of these three glands constitute the seminal plasma that is secretion of seminal vesicle and the prostate gland uh, is called as a seminal plasma and it is rich in fructose calcium and certain enzymes so it's clear now the along with the, the seminal plasma then the sperms are also found we call that as the semen so what is semen it is nothing but the seminal plasma along with the sperms now the external genitalia of the male reproductive system consists of the penis the penis is the end, uh, the main external genitalia the enlarged the end of the penis is called the glans penis and it is covered by a loose fold of skin called as the fore skin so this i'll show you in the previous uh, picture so here you can see so this is a external gen gen genitalia which is called as the penis right and the tip enlarged end of the penis is called as the glans penis and it is covered by a membrane which is called as a skin fold of skin which is called as the fore skin so that is all about external genitalia hope it's clear so the male reproductive system consists of a pair of testes accessory ducts accessory glands and the male external genitalia